Hello, welcome to The Market Carver. I'm Adam Harder, Chief Investment Officer, Financial Enhancement Group. Thank you so much for clicking and giving us a few minutes of your time. I'm joined again with Andrew Thrasher, Chartered Market Technician and our Portfolio Manager. So ready to discuss this week's topics again. Uh, I would take a moment and thank each of you that, that did take a second to give us feedback. We had asked for that. Uh, really helps us know if we're going the right direction here and, and, uh, and uh, we're going uh, the way that's given you the most impact uh, for knowing what's going on on each and every week. So I, I do thank you for, for taking that time. Uh, this week here, we're going to talk about uh, just a few topics. I know we went a little bit longer last week, so I appreciate every one of you that, that stuck with us. Uh, it was a little bit more uh, important to keep you in tune with, with the volatility that was a little bit higher and elevated last week. Uh, but this week, we're going to talk about small cap valuations and where they stand relative to large caps, uh, an update on the support levels that Andrew filled you in on last week, uh, and then we'll go and, and reference drawdowns and, and point to where this market uh, is going. Andrew, before we kick off and get going, anything that's not on the script that you'd like to dive into? I just really want to give a big thank you to my mom, who I'm assuming that's who you're referring to, that gave some good feedback. Uh, ah. Also, probably probably not my wife, but probably probably my mom. Your mom, thank her for the good feedback. But uh, no, it's been it's been great seeing that seeing the good uh, the good comments, and we're always trying to get this this content to be what people want to see. Um, so we'll always be making adjustments, but it was a pretty eventful week. It's been a pretty eventful start to the year uh, for equity markets. We definitely have turned a page from 2021 to 2022, and the script of last year is not the script of this year, as we kind of uh, tends to be the history uh, that we talked about last week, that we can't expect the, the low volatility of 2021 to continue into this year, but um, some pretty big moves and, and looking forward to discussing them. Yeah, no no doubt, and it's been uh, it's been a long time. Uh, I know COVID crash aside, where we've seen moves that are three, four, five percent within the day, <laughs> in, in uh -huh. both directions. Quite wild, quite wild. So let's dig into so small cap valuations. Uh, look at the fundamental side in, in the market, and and the most common question I think we're we're asked more often than not is. Uh, where is the market going? Is it going to go up or is it going to go down? And, and rather than look at it from that angle, which we certainly do, I like to look at what markets do we want to be in? Uh, it's not all about hitting the, the absolute right market, but being in the best spot. Uh, even inside of down markets, we can often find an area that is looking good at uh, commodities. And this year might be an example of that. Okay. Uh, one asset class that's got more of our attention as we start 2022 are small caps. Uh, and this chart showing you the, a rare circumstance where they're, valuation setup is more compelling by a large degree relative to large caps. So uh, first thing we got to do is really understand from a broader perspective why small caps typically are more expensive than large caps. And so uh, this chart is looking at what we call earnings yield. So it's the inverse of the price to earnings ratio. So the higher we are on, on this chart, that is more dollars of earnings for every dollar of stock price. So the stock has more of a, a yield. So think of it that way. Uh, it's a sort of like a dividend yield, uh, but taking into account all the earnings, not just those that are paid out uh, as a dividend. But small caps uh, typically are more expensive than their uh, larger count brothers because, or larger cap brothers, because they grow faster. Uh, they've got a much longer runway. So you were willing to pay more for every dollar of earnings because the expectation that they'll grow more rapidly. But what we find here lately, because large caps are so stretched and a handful of them got very expensive, particularly at the end of last year, uh, that small caps are unusually trading with a much higher earnings yield uh, than they than the large caps. And you have to go back into the dot com era when it was another era where large caps really dominated uh, the market to find a circumstance just like that. Uh, so we do look at this. This is not a timing tool. This doesn't mean that 2022 is going to be good for small caps. Uh, but as we go forward five, 10 years, which very well could be a lower return environment for the S&P 500 or maybe not quite to the levels that we had the last five to 10. That may not hold true for small caps, uh, which could have a, a long run. And uh, Andrew, I'll point to you here in a second on the Russell 2000 and, and its composition. But uh, unlike large caps, small caps, uh, you typically when we look at a large cap index, they're going to be quite common, whether it's the Russell 1000 or the S&P 500, very much alike. The two main S&P or the two main small cap indices are quite different. 
that being the Russell 2000 and the S&P 600. So the S&P 600 is, is put together by a committee. Uh, there is some hands that going in that pie selecting the 600 small caps that represent the S&P 600 versus the Russell 2000, which is simply the 2000 smallest stock. So the difference there is in the Russell 2000, you have companies that are on the way down uh, that were once big caps now becoming smaller as opposed to those that are just bigger getting smaller. And that can create a big difference. And that's very important today too. Yeah, very big difference. The biggest example of that is it's a, it's attributable to a company that probably a lot of people are familiar with, AMC Movie Theaters. Everyone remembers uh, pre-COVID when we could go to the movie theater. And that became one of the largest, at one point, it was the largest stock in the Russell 2000. And this was during a period where they were pretty much on the edge of bankruptcy. Um, you had a lot of very small traders that were trying to almost kind of corner the market in AMC stock and try to really push it higher. And we had a short squeeze, meaning people that were trying to short the stock that be bearish on it um, were being squeezed in the sense they had to start undoing that bearishness, undoing their shorts. And so we saw the AMC stock shoot up and it started having a big impact on the Russell 2000 because it had such a large weighting. Um, it's not typically something we see very often, especially a very volatile stock like AMC, um, but we're starting to see a lot of volatility over the last six, eight months in the Russell 2000 um, compared to, like you said, to the S&P 600. Um, and again, it's a great reminder and the best take home lesson is not all indices are the same, not all ETFs or mutual funds are the same, just because they track maybe a broad category of small cap. Um, there's a lot of nuances that go into that. And so it's really important to know what you own and what type of, of index basket that's being tracked. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Thank you, sir. But in, in, in the small caps by far, by a wide margin, when we talk about small caps, you're usually talking Russell 2000. Uh, so mm -hmm. absolutely, very, very important uh, today. Uh, going back to the support levels, uh, we're going to the next slide here is going to be an update to last week and, and one of the levels you were filling us in and what we were watching. So I'll let you take it from what we've seen since that moment. Yeah, so at that time we were talking, looking at this cluster of support levels. When we start looking at the market, the daily chart of the S&P 500, which is what we're looking at here, we started seeing that there was this cluster right around 4,300 on the S&P. That's pretty much where the October, September low was, the one year moving average. And I think one of the most important is the actual, that's where about a 10% drawdown would be. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later, the kind of significance of, of 10%. But that's often where we start seeing buyers start coming back in um, when we get these clusters of support. So we kind of knew that going into, into last week um, that this maybe will draw in some buyers and that's kind of an important level. We want to see if, if traders do respect it and they very much did. Um, we saw some intraday um, breaks below that, but they kept coming back in and we kept seeing that level defended and then started moving then higher at the end of the week. And it's to continue so on Monday and Tuesday when we're recording this um, for we're seeing equities to continue to hold above that level. And it's encouraging. It's good to see that there's still some dip buyers around um, defending that price level. And hopefully we can continue to move uh, further away from it to the upside. Oh, ex excellent coverage. And, you know, I'm watching this and, and remembering some things that you've taught me over the years. And uh, I just emphasize here for a second is, you know, when it was just Joe and I uh, managing the portfolios back in uh, the, the 2000 era and in, in early 2010s, we use technical analysis, uh, but not near to the level that you've brought to the table with your CMT designation and your focus on technicals. But that's one of the, the things that I've learned from you is it's not just that area of support and resistance, but there's a lot of activity around that that you have to be careful. Just because the index peaks underneath it doesn't mean that you've lost it. Uh, there, there's a whole lot of intra things that are important with that candle, so to speak, that, that you know, we, we learned to begin to monitor once you came on and showed us the way. Yeah, so if we keep watching that 4,300 level on the downside, we're getting back above the 200 day moving average, another popular um, smoothing mechanism for the market. We're back above that right now. Um, like I said, we're recording this on Tuesday. I was just on Fox Business um, earlier in the afternoon and, and again, talking about those same levels. That's what technicians are really focusing on. And they said, what's the key level for, for the S&P? I'm talking about the 4,300. And that's what we're talking about in the market, Carver. That's very much what a lot of journalists are asking me as well. Uh, because there's a lot of nervousness out there and people want to know where should we start kind of trying to evaluate the market. And it can be as simple as saying, based off what the price action is doing, we're, we're seeing a lot of clustering at 4,300. Um, it doesn't have to be real complicated. Yeah, well said. And uh, you segued, uh, you previewed uh, the 10% drawdown, which is the next thing to focus on 
Uh, one of the things we hit in our early in the year communications was that 2021 was an exception, not a rule uh, in terms of the low levels of volatility. And, and so we have seen at least a, an intraday 10 percent push. Uh, and you did a nice job on Monday um, uh, with this data here and what it points to going forward uh, in terms of returns once you see that 10 percent draw down. Yeah, so last year we didn't see a lot of move lower. The lowest decline we saw in 2021 was, was a brief 5% pullback. And that was really the exception to the rule. When we look at market history, going back all the way back to 1928, Goldman Sachs put out this great chart in the, in the stat that showed on average, each year has a, a roughly peak to trough drawdown of 13%. To having a 10% pullback, what we've had so far right now, is very much normal. What, was, what we had into 2021, that was the anomaly. And so traditionally, look again, going back to 1928, 62% of all years have a drawdown that exceeds 10%. So this is just a great reminder that volatility is a, is a feature, not a bug of the market. So having drawdowns of 10% is very, very normal. Um, what this chart, this table here is showing that if we were to just look at um, trying to buy a dip at 10%, we're not necessarily suggesting this strategy or, or, or putting any kind of endorsement behind it, but just looking at the math that the markets do trend higher, that if we were to start looking at what the market does after a 10% drawdown, and we can see kind of the results divvied up here in each bar. Um, on average, the market over the next 12 months is higher by about 15% after we experience a 10% drawdown. You can see the best year was in 1979, where it actually went up 30%. And then on the, the other side of that, the worst year, 2007, not a year we want to we want to spend a lot of time talking about, a lot of hurt feelings around 07 and 08, where it actually did go down 39%, which the, the reason I point that out is nothing is perfect, no strategy has, um, it doesn't have its, its failings, but it's just a reminder that traditionally the market does have, does recover um, when things look bleak, like they did in March of 2020 during the COVID crash, the equity market did recover, it just take, took some time. And again, when we have these 10% pullbacks, traditionally, the market does rally about 15% over the next 12 months. Um, now, we don't look at that blindly. We continue to want to evaluate the market each day and every week and each month um, and try to determine where the best risk rewards are and how healthy are the internals and all the data that, that I go through with Adam every single day. Um, but it's just a good reminder that drawdowns are normal. Most years have them. The years that don't, again, are the exception to the rule. Um, and so right now, this is just a normal part of the market environment. Yeah, thank you for that. And and go into the small cap, large cap comparison. So this is a focus on the S and P five hundred. When we do look at those small caps, uh, who boy, <laughs> uh, there was even uh, some especially large uh, drawdowns in there, which is you know uh, it, it's going to skew and show you the same thing. Um, it's even been harsher. But uh, when we do find moments of optimism, it may be even more brighter uh, on some of those smaller companies, and, and they certainly have our attention. Yeah, you've seen so, some thank of those, you again. those smaller. Uh, oh, I was just gonna say right yeah, some of those smaller names, some of the smaller names, those growth names have really been hit. While we're down 10% on the SP, they've been down 30, 40, 50, some are down 70%. Um, so the market's been able to absorb a lot of that um that weakness fairly well when with all things considered. Yeah, thank you. And sorry for the interruption there, but uh appreciate all of you taking the time here and and sticking with us on this uh, week's market carver. Give us a call, schedule your meeting, scan the QR code, or call our 800, name, 800 number, 800-928-4001. And also don't forget to catch our radio show. Consider this, whether it's on the airwaves, WIBC, or however you choose to get your podcast. Hey, thanks again, and have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.